Welcome everyone to another great hour of NWA Mountain State Wrestling. I'm the outlaw rock star, the pretty boy redneck, sweet Stephen Hensley. And we want to say to all the mothers out there, we hope you had a great Mother's Day and a very special well wish going out to Mama Outlaw, Cheryl Nichols and Clay County from yours truly. Now tonight, we had a great main event planned for you. And I'll tell you what, we're still going to have a great main event. But the question mark tonight, instead of the three-way grudge match we were planning on between the Bunkhouse Boys, J.C. Dykes Jr., Carl, and the Urban Death Squad, instead of that match, we're looking at a question mark this evening because the Urban Death Squad, conspicuous by their absence, aren't here. And in their place is a team TBA for a number one contenders contest for a shot at the tag team titles. Also coming up this evening, we're going to have Dynamite Derek Billings going up against Eric Brooks. Dynamite Derek Billings, of course, representing the future of wrestling, the Giftarage. Later on tonight, we're also going to have the big agile man, the Bulldozer, going up against the franchise player of Mountain State Wrestling, the Stro. Also, the television champion's going to be in action when Brian Kyle, the future of this business himself, the legit hit, goes up against Justice and a knockdown drag out fight that I guarantee could steal the show. And fans, stay tuned, because in just a few moments, we're gonna hit you with some hard hitting club and hillbilly action like you ain't never seen before, right after this commercial break and these words from our sponsor. This is Commissioner Larry Light. If you'd like to see the great TV stars of NWA Mountain State Wrestling come to your town, give us a call at area code 304-673-2054 or check us out on the web at mountainstatewrestling.com. Johnny Blast, Spider, we always knew that you was chicken to wrestle us. Tonight was supposed to be a three-way. Now we find out that y'all ain't here. Y'all ain't not gonna show up tonight. What do you think about that, Big Willie? They can't even show, they can't even make the matches. What kind of champions do we have? Blast, Spider, you want to be closet champions? Since he's a spider, he's up in the cobwebs, up in the closets. But tonight, we're going to see who the best number one contenders are for the tag team titles. We're going into that three-way tonight, and the best team's going to come out, and you guys have to defend the titles in the contract. You have to be there. You have to put the titles up, and we're going to see the best team win. The following match is scheduled for one fall with a 10-minute time limit. From Princeton, West Virginia, Dynamite Derek Billings. representing the Giftarage, Dynamite Derek Billings. And from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Eric Brooks. Well, Eric Brooks may be a bohemian, but there's one thing that happens in a match where a bohemian goes against a technical wrestler like Derek Billings. Derek Billings is going to dissect the big man, chop the Redwood down, and take him apart. You know, we got a lot of stuff coming up this hour. Up next, we have the big bulldozer. He's going to be taking on the former champion, the Maestro. Then after that, we got Dynamite Brother out there, the Jin Hit Brian Cowell. And just goes the championship against Justice, the returning Justice. And then there's a three way tag match. You know, we'll talk about that later because it's me and Carl. We're Spunk Out Twins. Apparently, UDS couldn't show up, so we're to the great by name of another team. And I think it's going to be Diablo and Tim. Well, that may be, but you got to say you're in quite a condition now. You got a pair for one team and you're going up against another. Good luck to you both tonight because I believe you're going to need it. I think I'm going to need it, but you never know. And and right now, champions, I think we have something on our side. And right now, Eric Brooks has Dynamite Derek Billings seemingly on the run to the outside. To a lot of people, it looks like Derek Billings might be needing to group right now, but what he's doing is destroying the momentum that Eric Brooks has already set forth in this match. That's a game of human chess. He's taking the right. Look at that. Cuts nice, spin. nice spinning kick to the gut there. Follows it up with a clubbing blow to the back. And Derek Billings is just taking his time right here, just working over the back of the big man. But the big man firing back with some forearms into the midsection. Dynamite reverses it. A big kick to the gut, firing out of the corner, and a reversal there. I caught him back. I didn't see him back. I'm not big enough. Big, big clothesline splash with authority by Brooks. The one, the two, and a kick out by Dynamite Derek. Come on, Carl, cheer him on. Now I've got to give you credit here. Eric Brooks is looking good for the moment. But there's one thing I've noticed about this guy. He's very nice. He cares what the fans think. He likes to slap hands. He likes to kiss babies. And when you're trying to swing against the man 
someone like Derek Billings, yes, he may have the advantage right now, but if you've got your eyes on the fans, if you're thinking about merchandise sales, you are not thinking about your opponent. And Derek Billings cares about one thing, and one thing only, and that's and the big, big slam to the mat there. You got any value? I you still need it. <laughs> with the action we have out here this week, I'm not going to disagree with you. I have two, and I kick out the last second by Brooks. Paul had that confused one time. He was hugging the fans' hands and slapping babies. Couldn't let him do that no more. Well, I don't know too much about Carl outside of the fact that it looks like a mangy mutt, and I can't believe you let him out into decent society. Uh, Virginia Brown Hot Cow over here. He's uh, making friends with Carl. Carl's got his trusty kendo stick over there. That's As you see lot. right now, what I was talking about earlier, Derek Billings is working over the abdomen, grounding the big man, taking away the momentum he had established early in this match. And right now, the name of the game is ground. Not so much pound, but ground the big man. Take him apart. The best wrestling. And a DDT, a desperation DDT with authority by Eric Brooks. It's any man's game right now. The first man to his feet is going to have about a tenth of a second advantage over the other man. And right now, it looks like that man's going to be Derek Billings, but a block and a big blow by Eric Brooks. And a block and another big blow. And Derek Billings is certainly rocked right now. Shooting him off, Derek. And a reversal. Oh, he's going to slam DOA to a T. Dead on arrival. The two and the three. This match is academic. Academic. You have a technical wizard against an unproven young man like Eric Brooks and the technical wizard. The third of the gift for us, the future of wrestling, he's going to win every time. And he's just putting an exclamation point on the death of this young man's hopes and dreams of a victory tonight. Wait a second. Carl! Carl, cut around! Carl! And what have we got here? A big lariat! Just rocked his socks, turned his feet over the head, left him planted. I mean, I can't leave my position to check on him. I hope my brothers are okay. I'm trying to do my job as a commentary, but I just want to well, I can, at somebody. I can tell I you. Like I, was called for. <laughs> I can tell you one thing. You may hope that your brother's all right, but one thing I can assure you is he is not all right. And this has got to, got to plague your mind going to that three-way main event. I can't help, man. As we see the gift garage looking on victorious. Carl's got a hard head, so I mean, I don't think it did any damage there, but I, mean, I don't know. He might have a hard head, but I'll tell you right now, the way he's holding his neck, it doesn't look too good for you tonight. I just hope he's okay by the main event. I mean, we have a big three-way match going on. Number one contendership. And up next, we have the bulldozer. And he's taking on the Meister. That's right, folks. The big guy, John Mann, the bulldozer, taking on the maestro. And the maestro himself has quite a rivalry going with Derek Billings. And Derek Billings is going to put him on notice. Mark my words. The gift garage is here to stay. Fans, stay tuned. We'll be right back. NWA Mountain State Wrestling. West Virginia has some of the strongest consumer credit protection laws in the nation. If you have been receiving multiple phone calls from debt collectors, credit card companies, and even other law firms trying to collect a debt from you or a family member, you may be entitled to compensation. Call Wesley White for a free case evaluation to see if your rights have been violated by unfair debt collection. We'll get you compensated. We'll stop the phone calls. Call Wesley today at 304-664-9201. Fans, welcome back to NWA Mountain State. You can hear the ground rumbling. That's called the bulldozers getting ready to come. That's right. The big man from Parts Unknown is getting ready to take on the maestro. He actually opens the door and doesn't just plow right through it because you never know with a man that big. He's probably back there eating three small midgets. Well, I'll tell you right now, if he's back there taking midgets apart, snapping their arms off and eating them, you certainly aren't going to be able to stop him. I certainly ain't going to be able to stop him. I don't know who's going to be able to stop him, but one thing, one thing I do know is a man that's going to try to stop him is the maestro. Well, the maestro, like him or not, and I certainly don't, he looks like a caveman, but I've got to admit, he hits like one too. He has those big ham hawk like hands of his. And once he gets a hold of you, there's a good chance he can take the big man off his feet, slam him to the canvas possibly, and maybe get the victory. But I'm going to tell you right now, the big man right there knows more about that ring than some fans will give him credit for, and he knows how to use his momentum and his size to his advantage. I, I really don't know, man. I mean, I've known the Maestro for many, many years. And <laughs> I like 
this guy. It's kind of hard to miss him. I mean, he's blocking the whole side of the ring. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen, the number one baby kisser himself, the maestro, the people's champion. And I'll tell you what, if you want to call this man the Hulk Hogan of this federation, you can call me the Bobby Heenan. Because I'm going to call it like it is. There is something about this man I don't like. There is something about this man that I don't trust. And mark my words, man. One day you'll see. This man is the man who will let you down. I'll tell you one thing about this man. He's been to WCW. He's been to Japan. He's been to Smoky Mountain. He's seen the top. He's seen the bottom. And he's sat like down the middle of the ladder. Well, you talk about how you don't like him, I guarantee he can drop you in your head before you got your whole little nickname out. Well, that's not saying a whole lie. Lay as much as one of his quadrants ever. But one thing I'll say about him, this man has been a star. He has been a star in the big leagues. But another thing to point out is that makes him a stepping stone to the young guys in this federation today looking to move up ahead, looking to make a name for themselves. Ladies and, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our second match of the evening is scheduled for one fall with a 10-minute time limit. First, hailing from parts unknown, Bulldozer! And his opponent, originally from New York City, now hailing from West Virginia, the Maestro! <laughs> Referee for this match is Brian Payne. Apparently you're new, but there's a whole lot more to it. That is the stroke. He is the Maestro of professional wrestling. I'll let that slide. I'll just say that it was my mistake. Well, I'll tell you what, you can call him the Stro, but for as long as I'm here, I'm going to call him the Stepping Stone because that is exactly what he represents to the young lions in this federation today. And the veterans still trying to make a name for themselves. Okay, the big man sitting in the corner. The Bulldozers are showing a lot of offense from the early onset of this match with those clubbing forearm blows to the upper back of the Maestro. And that's a good plan right there. The Maestro has a big, broad upper body, and he's trying to work on it ahead of time, destroy a little bit of the advantage he might have in the power game. I want to cut you off, but you got to you said the Maestro is a stepping stone. I'm afraid of Bulldozer steps on him, he's got a bunch of pebbles. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why, if the oh, Bulldozer man. steps on him, he very well might be a bunch of pebbles. Right forearm from Bulldozer. Definitely. Brian Payne trying to get him out of the corner, giving him a five count. And it looks like the Bulldozer might have worn himself out a little bit there, hitting into that big, thick, crow, magnum-like head of the caveman, the Stro. The Stro seemed to whip the Bulldozer's leg out. And a big bionic elbow, our old school wrestling by the maestro. Look at that jab. Another jab. Another jab. You think he's going to do another one? No. Oh! And the big man going to the outside to regroup here. What's the matter, big man? Well, I'll tell you why. Hey, the boy is in drive. Lift the bucket and get back in there. He doesn't have to do anything he doesn't want to do. And if you think they should get back in that ring any quicker, step on up from this announced position and try to make him. He'll leave you a splat on the outside of that ring, and I believe you know it. Run inside there, wave a chicken wing, and then run out the other side. He'll be on me like white on rice. Well, I'll tell you what, you certainly don't want to be in the way when he runs into the ring. He might run right over top of you. Just absorbing that big chop is the big man firing back, and now he's got the stroke in the corner. But cut off. But he's still firing back. As big and strong as the Stro is, he just can't put this monster on the ground. And big, battering ram-like shots by the bulldozer. Right a headbutt. I don't know if it caught desperation or not. And a rake to the back. I got to say, I like the style of the bulldozer. He certainly has that killer instinct. He's not letting up on him. And the big man coming off the ropes. Oh! And a big miss! A big miss! Right there shows the veteran instinct of the Maestro moving. So the young line just got caught by the cage. And the Maestro is circling up behind him. And what's he going to do here? He looks like he's got the... Oh, looks like he's forced him down to the cross face, but he just can't get the big man down. Nope. Ain't going to happen. The big man's just too big, too strong. And that mistake, that mistake by the veteran is going to cost him there. Because the bulldozer's back on top. And more wear and tear. Oh! Oh, 
big miss. Come on. Oh! And a nice shinning wizard kick by the Stroh. That was a shot against the Gurry, but I'll let that go slide. Wizards and knee strikes. I stand corrected. I said, I can't say. Well, the Stroh's got wound up for you. It looks like something big. And the Bulldozer are back in control here. He appears to be going for a suplex. The Maestro blocks it. Oh, the Maestro, Maestro blocks, blocks again. It. Turns him around here. And a big suplex by the Maestro. Where did that power come from this late in the contest? Oh, the ring didn't explode there. It certainly is. You got two big giant men in there. We're just looking at a massive humanity in this contest. And I can't believe that one ring can contain all this action. Oh, the Maestro is setting up for him. Stepping over. <laughs> it looks like he's going for a Scorpion Deathlock style maneuver here. No, but the Bulldozer no, raked right to the eyes. Raked right to the eyes. Good presence of mind there by the Bulldozer. And you might look down on his tactics. You might say that he's not fan friendly. But one thing you've got to agree with me on, like it or not, fan friendly doesn't win a match, does it? Never know, man. I've been fan friendly for years. It's helped me win once a lot of matches. Once What's again, that? a big miss. Got him down for the cross, folks. He's pulling hard. Will it? I cannot believe this turn of events. So much momentum in the big man's favor, and the story still takes him apart. Why don't you just quit the rant and announce the winner? And the winner for this contest, the Stroh! Good job. Good job. The fans. Up next, television title match. Well, Big Bad Justice is in for some big bad news and a big bad wake-up call because Brian Kyle, one-third of the greatest faction in the history of our sport, is going to take him to town, take him apart, and if we're lucky, take him to the hospital and cash the winner's check. June 12th, Hinton, West Virginia, Tenny, Diablo, the Strobe. We're all coming to town at the Summers County Memorial Building. You want to see what happens? Be there. Saturday, June 19th, Alderson, West Virginia. Gear up! Fans of all ages, come on down. NWA Mountain State at its finest! And Stro, the Maestro of Wrestling, is ready to boogie down like never before. Pop some heads and take some names. And it's all because the People's Champ says so. So come on down. Saturday, June 19th. All is in West Virginia. Ooh la la. You know what I'm excited tonight, boys? I roll up to the building, right? I come into the locker room, I see my name. I see it on the sheet, right? You know who I'm wrestling tonight. Psycho Sid Justice, guys. Come on, this guy, he's been in WCW, hey, WWE, hey, hey, WWF, hey, hey. he's been in Japan. I'm excited. What? what? Yeah, I know he went by Sid Vicious. Let's go. Cool. No, no. I think you got the wrong guy. You got the wrong guy, bro. There's another one? Yeah, this is the little smelly guy that used to run with you in there. Yeah, remember? Oh, oh like that justice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need to say anything else. I'm good. Good. I thought I was staying here. BK, you know what that belt needs? It needs some justice. Ladies and gentlemen, the following match is scheduled for one fall with a 15 minute time limit. The NWA Mountain State Wrestling Television title is on the line. First, hailing from California, Justice! And his opponent, representing one third of the gift garage, the legit hit Brian Cole, your NWA Mountain State Wrestling Television Champion. That's right. Never know, this might be Justice's night to get that television out. It may be Justice's night, but then again, it might not. And I've got to tell you, Brian Kyle isn't going to lose focus in a big time match like this. He's got too much on the line, too much steam, too much momentum. And one thing he doesn't want to do at this stage of his career is take a backward step. That's at, like a belt. 
that title belt was invented. I even held that title belt from August last year until late October, early November. And it's certainly gained a measure of prestige since then, hasn't it? It had prestige when I had it around my waist. Well, that on. is if debatable. If anything, it's like some value. A big shove with authority by Justice there. You never know, it might gain some prestige and value if Brian Cowell can just actually wrestle this match against the big bohemoth Justice without using the gift to rush and back up. Brian Kyle doesn't need the gift to rush to win this match. Why it's like I here? say, match in, match Why night. It is not the interference of the gift garage it is the influence of the gift garage and the only reason they're out here is to show support for their baby boy their pride and joy brian kyle well, you got the baby boy part right you see that side right over there and brian kyle taking some time out here to regroup to regain some momentum in this match he's going to need a new strategy because going in there and trying to match power with a man that big and that quick isn't going to work He's going to have to go back to his basics. He's going to have to go back to technical wrestling, mat style wrestling. Ground the big man, chop him down. Nice side headlock there. Cutting off some of the oxygen flow to the big man. But the big man pushes him off the ropes. And a big shoulder block by Brian Kyle. Talk about it. Right there's one hungry wolf in justice. And another young line, we have referee Mark Hudgens and they're trying to keep order in this house. Well, I'll tell you what, when you go hungry for so long, it starts to make you starve. And while a starving man is a dangerous man, a man who's been fed, a man who's been to the top, he can stay hungry too. And the good thing for him is he's not worn out by waiting in the wings. He knows what it's like to be a champion. He knows what it's like to hold that title. He's been holding it for a while. And it certainly gives him an edge in the confidence going into this match. And Brian Kyle taking a moment here to get, regain some of his breath after an early, early series of misfortunes with the big man, taking his time, bringing him up. And a big shot to the jaw there. <laughs> Certainly seems to have rocked the big man. The momentum seems to be changing. Definitely a big impact elbow, but how long will he be able to capitalize on it with the work that's been done? You see already there, he didn't have the strength to hold on to the cover. Oh, the moves like oh. that by Brian Kyle. There's the lariat from the legit hit. And that certainly, certainly seemed like a hit to me. He took the big man's head off with that one. Look at that hard shot. He got him on the ropes. Referee Mark Huggins got him. Please get him off the ropes. And he's throwing him to the outside of the ring here. And to a lot of people, this looks like a cheap shot. But what he's doing here, what he's doing is just playing some good old fashioned mind games. And maybe you think that isn't fair. Maybe you think that isn't honest. But what it is going to do is to deliver a victory because of the influence. How much the influence of the gift garage. Did you see how lightly they hit the big man there? They're just trying to wake him up. They're just trying to keep him in the game. But they're still playing the mind games. Brian's bet. Take Brian's belt. Well, they're certainly trying to do that. You have to protect your investment. And you can't blame them for protecting an investment that's as hot as this one. The big man back in the ring. And a big boot to the head. Brian Kyle going for the cover. The one, the two. Oh, oh. Has a foot on the ropes. Last sec. I wouldn't call that so much instinct as I would call that a reflex by a man that's dying in there. I was, that was his last resort there. Just needs to get his second win. Nice snap there by Brian Kyle. Followed with a kick to the upper back. Followed by another kick. You just gotta love this style. You gotta love this kind of killer instinct by a man this young. Off the ropes. And another lariat. Only two, Justice keeps pointing them up. And you can see the look of disbelief on the face of Brian Kyle. I thought it was over, these fans thought it was over, and I think even Justice thought it was over. I think that's the only reason he kicked up. the back, hopefully you can handle us in here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it seems I'm left to call this contest by myself. And at this moment, Brian Kyle is firmly in control of this match. You see Justice in the corner, they're holding his throat. And you see some clubbing blows by Dynamite Derek Billings to Justice. Justice looking around. He's surrounded by a hungry pack of wolves right now. And a big shot by Brian Kyle to Justice. And Justice doesn't know what's going on at this point. And you gotta think, Brian Kyle is definitely feeling like a cat playing with a dead mouse. Shots to the abdomen, 
but no, the momentum is short-lived. Brian Kyle fires back to the knee to that one, and a big knee with authority. And Brian Kyle looks to just be having the time of his life at this point, waiting in the wings to just take this big man down, but first he's going to have a little bit of fun just to put the exclamation point at the end of the night on this man's night. And no, oh, coming off the ropes, he's caught him. It's a big takedown, he's reversing it. And no, Brian Kyle makes it to the ropes. It's that killer instinct of Brian Kyle that's keeping him in the game at this match, folks. And there you see Justice going for a big suit play. Gets the technical wizard, Brian Kyle, over. He's going for a pinfall. One, two, and Brian Kyle kicks out. You've got to respect the abilities of the champion. It's like I've said throughout this contest, this man is young and this man still has a long and glorious future in the business. A reversal by and oh my God, just driving the face to the mat there. But Brian Kyle isn't out of this match yet. He did the early work in this match and chopped the Redwood down and the Redwood can't get back up to a vertical base to capitalize on that move. And you see the gift garage out there helping to encourage their boy. And Brian Kyle looks like he's going to be the first man to his feet in spite of the big move by Justice. Brian Kyle in the corner pulling himself up by the ring ropes. And he's up to the vertical base first. And Justice holding his abdomen. This big man might be softened up and ready for the kill at this point. Brian Kyle coming out of the corner. And a block by the big man. And a big shot followed by a big shot. Sends him off the ropes. And a big spinning elbow by Justice to Brian Kyle. Brian Kyle stuck in the corner now. Justice stalking him. Goes in, shot to the abdomen, shot from the solar plex. Big elbow to the jaw. And Brian Kyle appears to be rocked at this point. Despite being firmly in control of this contest early on, but no, there's that killer instinct, that ring psychology of Brian Kyle, the big boot to the head, and Justice doesn't know where he is at this point. And Brian Kyle doing what he needs to do at this point getting back inside of the head of the big man who's been on a roll the last few moments of this contest. And you see the referee counting, but Brian Kyle isn't worried about the count. He knows the count's up to 10, and he's just taking his time. He's the first man in the ring. Justice coming back in the ring, and Brian Kyle with a big kick to the ribs, and he brings the big man to his feet with an unconventional maneuver, and the Lariat took his head off to the one, the two, and the three. And drop another win, another win up for the hottest faction in the sport of wrestling today, the Gift Raj. And fans, that was just an absolutely fantastic contest and a fantastic win by the television champion, Brian Kyle, who stands tall, the victor and the future of this business. Giftarage looking confident as ever and with victories like that I imagine they're going to have that look on their face for a long time. Now ladies and gentlemen how good is it? How good is it that we're having this fantastic night of wrestling here in Hillbilly Heaven, Hinton, West Virginia. And folks if you think you've seen the best from Mountain State Wrestling just stay tuned because it's only going to get better. Brother. Lucky wants to know if you're okay. Uh, I, I don't, I, I, I don't know. That was a heart. You don't what? I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Why do you sound like one of the Beatles? I, who, who are you? I'm your brother. This is Doug. I don't have a brother. I'm an only child. What are you talking about? You wanna go out for drinks and pizza? Make you feel better? I'd rather have tea and crumpets, thank you. What's a crumpet? Crumpets. Small little biscuit-like things. I can make you some biscuits, some gravy, sausage. Yorkshire pudding? Are you sure you're okay? Uh, I think so. I think they gave you like a London lobotomy or something, brother. What, what's the deal with this? It's, it's the mohawk, man. You know, you got the fuzzy hair. What? Beard. I, I don't even know Carl, who you are. You okay, man? Carl. Great. More medication. Yeah. Getting ready, huh? Oh yeah. Ready to go make some people shine tonight, baby. You better want to. That's it, man. <laughs> Never know, right? Gentlemen. What do you say, buddy? Hey. 
We've been watching you for a while now. We're very impressed with, of course, you being the junior heavyweight champion. You a former TV champion and still in the hot pursuit of regaining that title, as well as giving King Richard quite a bit. We'll take some one shot, baby. <laughs> we have a situation tonight. We just heard that the tag team champions, Urban Death Squad, are not going to be able to make the show tonight. And we have a three-way match in which the winner is going to be given a shot at the tag titles. I have a contract here if you guys would be interested in signing. I think you would really be good together. Board of Directors, just look at you guys. <laughs> yeah, you got a little you make it look good too, I like to have some more gold. I like it. Want to do a team? Yeah. Let's do it, baby. Sounds good. Right. Just put your John Hancock on there. Thank you. All right. And best of luck to you. Thank you. Fans, there you have it. Now we do have our three teams tonight for our three way tag team match. We're back from commercial break, and we are ready for one heck of a contest this evening. We just learned Diablo Jr. and Kenny are going to be the replacements in the main event match. The grudge match that we were going to see is now a number one contenders match. Their opponents, my former announced partner, J.C. Dykes Jr. and his brother Carl, and these big, rough and tough rednecks, the Bunkhouse Boys. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these guys may have seen a wrestling school in their day, but you can bet your bottom dollar they learned how to fight in the ballrooms and the honky tonks. Now, I've got to say, I like your style, big man. It's right here, right here. You've got to know how to fight like a redneck if you want to know how to win in the mountain state. Their opponents for this match, I don't believe, stand as good of a shot. They're not big men, they're not as tough. They aren't saying that they're weaklings, but man, I think they're outmatched in this match because you have a case of size versus speed and agility. I've got to tell you, speed and agility can count for a lot of things in a match, but when you get caught by a big mountain like William Blackhouse or his partner, the Bandit, then good Lord Almighty, you're going to end up a bug on a windshield with that big old semi. And here we see Kenny coming out to the ring with his partner, Diablo Jr., the junior heavyweight champion. And Kenny is certainly fired up and ready for this one. That's a shot for our number one contender's position. And a shot at the tag team titles means more gold. In this business, one thing that you gotta agree with is if you got gold, then you're gonna get a bigger payday. You're certainly at the level you wanna be at. And these guys just wanna rise to the top. But again, they've got to go up against these two mountains of men in the mountain state. And the hillbillies from the trailer park, Carl and J.C. Dykes, Jr. And you look at a contest like this, and you got to remember, El Diablo, Jr. and Kenny are the wild card in this match. The two monstrous mountains in the corner didn't prepare for them. And these men coming out here right now certainly didn't prepare for them. Now I'll tell you what, I think they're at a disadvantage after what happened here earlier in the evening to Carl. And you gotta wonder if Carl is ready for this contest. And you see a look of what, what? What is this? What is this? I can't believe Carl made it out here for this one. And Eric Brooks certainly looks concerned. Carl looks confident, perhaps a bit more than he should be, and his brother doesn't look happy about this. And if I was his brother, I certainly wouldn't be happy about this one either. And you see Carl with a polite nod to his opponents in the ring, but I'll tell you what, you politely nod your head to the men in that ring, and they're liable to kick your jaw right through the top of your skull. Because in this business, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot take your eye off the prize. Blackhouse looking down on the boys from the trailer park getting ready to go in the ring. 
I'm going to ask you, young man, how do you feel about your chances right now? How do you feel about your chances, Dice? No words from Dice. You can see he's obviously too concerned for his brother's well-being. His brother shouldn't be in this match. They shouldn't be allowed to compete. They should be thrown out of this building. This is a danger to this young man's health. Ladies and gentlemen, the following match is scheduled for television time remaining. It is a three-way match for our number one contender's position. Introducing first, the two mountainous men representing the Mountain State, the Bunkhouse Boys, William Blackhouse and the Bandit. Their opponents, Bill Diablo, and Tinny! And their opponents, J.C. Dykes Jr. and his brother, Cole! I've got to tell you, we've got a... I stand corrected, Sir Carlton. This man is an absolute joke, and Eric Brooks certainly should be ejected from this contest. His emotional ties to the brothers is certainly a question mark in what's going to happen in the outcome of the night. I certainly hope security escorts him out of the building. And starting off this contest tonight, not J.C. Dykes or Carl, looks to be El Diablo. And which one of the two monsters in the corner is going to start this contest out? Will it be the Bandit or Black House? I gotta tell you, I don't think it really matters because once again, when it's big versus small, big's gonna run right over top of it. It doesn't matter how quick you're moving when you get caught by a semi. And Diablo is starting this one off against the Bandit. The Bandit circling Diablo in the ring. And Diablo seems to be at a disadvantage in this one, I would say. He's sitting in the ring looking across there at a mountain of a man. He goes behind him with a waist lock, goes into a headlock, and then into an arm bar. And I've got to tell you, this wasn't the outcome I expected at the beginning. And a tag to Tinny, climbs the rope, and a double axe handle smash to the arm of the bandit. And the, ba the bandit is grimacing in pain at this point. And he's actually brought him down to a knee, which was not what I thought would happen this early in the contest with a big man. Usually it takes more time in a contest to take a man that big down to his feet. But I don't know how long they can keep this momentum going on because there's a lot of power, a lot of power in the big man. And a headbutt to that arm they've been working on since the beginning here. And this is good, solid, sound ring strategy. And I hate to admit it, by Diablo and Kenny continue to work on the arm and Sir Carlton comes the ropes with a big elbow smash onto the elbow of the bandit. And just holding onto that arm bar, just cinching it in, just twisting and torquing that arm of the bandit. And that's a good solid move when you're going against a big man. Take one of his weapons away, take one of his arms away, it's going to make it harder for him to cut. And the big man brought him over, but Carlton, Carlton actually had the presence of mind to hold through and roll over with that arm drag takedown. And the big man thankfully makes it over to the ropes. And it's going to take a moment to regroup here. He's backing into his corner. And you got to wonder what's going through his head. This is not what he expected to happen in the offset of this contest. I don't think it's what anybody expected. But the tag in to Big Blackheart. And Blackheart standing across at Carl. And Carl, if he's smart, should go ahead and tag Diablo back in. Let Diablo deal with this beast in the ring right now. Because a grizzly bear looks like he could eat him for lunch. And what kind of fighting stance have we got going on here? Oh, and he suckers him. Good ring psychology there. Take his eyes off the partner. Let the partner come in, get the initial blow, and now you've got some momentum on your side. And a big clothesline with authority there. Rocks him down to the canvas. And you got to wonder what's going through the minds of Dykes. Looking in the ring at his brother being manhandled at this point, he's got to be thinking maybe they made a mistake here. Maybe with the wild card team involved in this match and these two mountainous men, and with the attack earlier in the night, maybe he shouldn't have let his brother in the ring. And you can see, you can see regret etched on the face of the man in the corner, looking at his brother 
just being decimated. And Blackheart brings him back to his feet, sends him into the corner. Comes out of the corner, and a back body drop by Blackheart. And Blackheart is just as big and mean as they come. And tag into the bandit. The bandit, you know, has got to be hungry after the way the opening moments of this contest went. And nice big foot to the stomach there, wearing Carlton down even more in this contest. He's going to follow that up with a suplex. And you got to wonder the shape of the neck. And Carlton going for a tag there. Kenny just moments away from getting tagged in, but he tags in the big man. And you'll see right here what kind of fair play you can expect out of the men that you expect to be role models for your children. He's taking the cheap shot, and he's decimating Carl. But Carl, out of nowhere, a desperation attempt there, two big boots to the chest of Kenny. And now hammering blows to the back. And Carlton is going to send Kenny off the ropes here. Kenny coming off the ropes. And a big clothesline by Carlton. One, two. And Tenny with a kick out there. Carlton in disbelief. Carlton right now, if you should believe anything, should believe that he should get out of the ring and tag his brother. Because I gotta tell you, I don't trust the strength of his neck at this point. He still looks like he might be feeling the effects of the attack, even if he's on a roll. A smart move, tagging his brother with a big headbutt to the arm of Tenny. And Tenny certainly looks to have lost any of the uh, any of the confidence he had a moment ago. J.C. Dykes certainly wants to work over this man and not let him be a danger to his brother. Of course, Dykes, if he wants to his brother, nice T-bone suplex there, not going to ignore that maneuver. Two, and a kick out, a kick out by Tenny. Dykes, if he truly cares about his brother, might want to get him out of the ring and maybe work this as a handicap match because his brother, I've got to tell you, had a screws, you screws loose to begin with and I've got think that he isn't quite all there at the moment, more so than usual. And a nice hammerlock by Diablo into a drop toe hold, takes him over. And where's he going to go from here? He's got the legs locked, but he's not going to go for a submission maneuver. Dykes had the good sense to make it to the ropes there. Diablo circling Dykes, going for a collar and elbow tie-up. Certainly favors Dykes, has a slight power advantage over the smaller man, Diablo. Just wrenching that arm. Diablo brought down to the mat, and Dykes stepping on the hand, and a nice leg drop, a nice leg drop on Diablo's arm. And now he's got his arm locked over there, just torquing on the wrist. Diablo gets his arms up, trying to bridge up there, but from the position that Dykes has a hold of his wrist there, I don't know how much momentum he's going to be able to carry over as far as getting out of this maneuver easily. And Dykes seems to be in control as he brings him up to his feet here. And he's back into the corner and he's tagging in the mountain of a man. He's going to let him do some work here. Blackheart, happy as ever to hurt somebody. The big 400 plus pounder by the looks of him. He's just having fun there. I mean, this is just a dog falling on a bone at this point. Diablo, the weaker man. And a nice forearm to the head followed by another forearm to the head. And this is not the corner that Diablo wants to be in because these two mean, rough and tough rednecks, these two ballroom brawlers, if you will, are certainly the kind of men that can take him apart. But as soon as I say that, Diablo's forcing him back to the other side of the ring with that thick head of his, not knowing what kind of shape he's in right now, just back in the big hands of the corner and then dragging his eyes across the ropes. And you see the bandit have concern for his partner trying to come in. And you see the cheap shots here, the cheap shots by the role models for your children. Carlton and Dykes holding the big man while Diablo and Tinny working over. And we've got a four-on-one contest here. And I guess that's fair in their minds. Every 100 pounds, they need another man on him. But I gotta tell you, Blackheart may not go down as easy as they'd like him to. He's big and mean, and Tinny, with a shot to the head, wants him further back in the corner. And you gotta hate this cocky attitude by this man right now. He's got the pretty boy good looks, and he thinks he has those knockout blows. But I gotta tell you, I'm hoping to see a turnaround here in a second. And I would like to see him driven through the mat. And big kicks to the gut there by Carlton. A big shot to the jaw there. Another big shot to the jaw there. And you can just see, just see how important this number one contender's match is to him. I don't like the guy. I don't think this is a smart decision getting involved in this match, but he's as hungry as anyone involved in this, and he wants those belts, and so does his brother. But the big man not letting go of that roof. There you go, go. A cheap shot by Dykes. A cheap shot by Dykes on the big man. 
just when he was gaining some momentum. And so Carlton, Sir Carlton, the victim of the London Lobotomy, with a big shot to the big man one more time, and a big headbutt. Lots of impact in the contest. Followed up with another shot to the jaw. And you know, Carlton and his brother here, as nice a guys as they are, I have to concede, they are showing killer instinct in this contest. Just making use of those headbutts. And you gotta say, his brother sitting in the ring there showing him how to do a proper headbutt. And as thick as their skulls are, going up against two leviathans like this, you know, as thick as their heads are, that may be a good move for them. And a big headbutt to the gut there. And a somersault roll and a tag into Tinny. And Tinny comes back to the ring. Pinfall one, two. He's not going to pin the big man that easy, that's for sure. And the tag into the bandit. And you can see the bandit isn't very pleased with what they've been doing to his partner. And you can count on revenge in mind when this big man goes into the ring. He's going to take his time. He's calculating the risks. And Kenny had better pay attention because if he acts cocky the way he normally does with this madman, this madman's going to take him to town, take him apart. Mountain State Wrestling, you gotta admit, fans, if you wanna see a knockdown, drag out fight, this is definitely the place to see it. Tenny looking for a tag here in the corner. A tag into Cyril Carlton. The bandit talking over game root and strategy briefly with his partner. Collar and elbow tie up. The big man going into the corner. Carlton trying to get out of this. And he's got him into a nice arm lock. Just wrenching on the wrist there. Twisting again, just torquing the arm of the big man. And this has been a good Sam Solid strategy throughout the match. Take the big man's arm apart. Keep him from catching you because it doesn't matter how fast you are when that man catches you and falls forward. You're a done Tom Turkey, I tell you what. And Dykes climbing the ropes. And what's he doing here? A lot of pageantry there for a forearm shot to the arm. But I gotta tell you, it doesn't look like the bandit likes that very much. And Blackheart holding Dykes in the corner, a little bit of payback for what four men did to one man earlier in this match here. He hasn't forgotten the treatment that they gave him. And he's certainly going to remind Dykes that when you disrespect a man like that, you've disrespected the wrong man for sure. And Dykes firmly not in control of this contest. And the bandit tagging out to Diablo. Diablo. Kick to the abdomen of Dykes. Kicks to the back of Dykes. Working over the midsection in general, the front and the back side of Dykes. And Dykes brought into the corner and receives a big boot sandwich for his troubles. Continuing to work over the midsection in the upper body of Dykes. Taking Dykes out of the corner. Throwing him into the ropes. Comes off the ropes. And a big power slam with authority by Tinny and the one, the two, and a kick out by Dykes. And you can see the bandit there realizing that while Dykes would be the man who's humiliated by the pinfall, he would be the, one of the two men that would lose an opportunity to the tag titles if he was the man who let him be pinned there. And Dykes firing back with some headbutts now on Tinny, trying to change the complexion of this match at this point. Tinny to his feet, but Dykes, that looks to be the sling blade. Two headbutts to the head. Nice underhook armbar into a suit play by Dykes, who is in Never Never Land at this point. He's looking for Tinkerbell and Peter Pan. He doesn't know what corner to look in for his partner because the corner he's in right now is the only corner that doesn't have a man. And the only bit of good news he can take from that is that he's not looking at Black. He's not looking at the bandit, and he's not looking at Denny, none of whom are going to show mercy in this number one contest contest. And a drop kick to the head of Dykes. Pinball attempt one, two, and Dykes barely getting the shoulder up at the last second there. Diablo bringing him back up to his feet. A forearm shot to the head, and a shot to the abdomen, followed up. Diablo walked a little bit here. Dykes regained a vertical base, sends him off the ropes, comes off the ropes. Oh! Nice flying elbow with authority by the big boy from the trailer park. Admin shot there by Diablo. 
And you've got to appreciate the effort from all men involved in this contest tonight. No doubt about it. We've got the roughest, toughest customers in the state of West Virginia. But I got to give the nod once again in this contest to my boys at this stage. We're looking at the Bunkhouse Boys. Just wearing them out, utilizing the size, utilizing the strength. And I think these boys, like me being outlaws, know the right way to twist these rules to work in their favor. And he lifts up Dykes and a double team maneuver there, cutting off more wind to Dykes. And Dykes just doesn't know what's going on at this point. They've cut off the flow of oxygen to his brain for so long. He's barely functioning to begin with. But I don't know that he's going to be able to uh, come back from so many blows, from so many chokes, from so much decimation. It's just he's trapped there in a double team. And it's just like watching wolves just toy sell. They're just eating him for breakfast. Shots to the throat. Shots to the upper body, shots to the abdomen. They're just decimating this guy. There's not going to be a part of his body that doesn't hurt at the end of this contest. Driving him into the turnbuckle and he tags in Tenny. And this might be a good solid sound strategy. Tenny with the strikes could certainly take Dykes to town at this point. Soften him up a little bit more. Still a tag leader in the match. Make sure that he doesn't pin Dykes. And the Bunkhouse boys could be back in control of this one. Looking at victory in just a couple of moments. Dykes off the ropes. The Ottawa, big drop kick to the abdomen, just continuing to work over the midsection. It's just good, solid, sound strategy. There's not a part of this man's upper body that doesn't hurt at this point in the contest. And Dykes, good Lord Almighty, he's got to feel like a piece of hamburger meat that's been beat well past the point of tenderness. And Kenny back in there. Sends him off the ropes. And good Lord Almighty, how much more punishment can Dykes take here? Kenny, though, doesn't look like he's doing too much better there. You see on the outside, the bandit firing away on Carlton. And Carlton firing back on the bandit. The big man firing back on him, but inside the ring, it's a different story. Dykes going for a... Nice! Nice modified style fisherman suplex with a fifth, but nobody's in the ring. Nobody's in the ring to count the pinfall. And Carlton holding on to that kinder stick over in the corner. Skin ready to punish the bandit over in the far corner. You see Diablo climbing the back of the big man and a kindo stick shot to the back of his own brother. And Tinny with a shot to the head there with that strike full of his. But once again, no referee in the inside because on the outside of the ring, on the outside of the ring, Diablo has a hold of the big man striking the ref, two by Tenny, and finally the three count. And this match, this match, the tell of the tape will be that Carlton's head was indeed not in the game, and that he certainly was a disadvantage for his brother, and the win's going to go to Tenny and Diablo. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the match, Tenny and El Diablo! And Carlton looking on in disbelief at his brother. His brother looking up, he would probably look in disbelief, but all he's seeing right now is stars. And you gotta wonder, you gotta wonder what's going through their heads at this point in the night. Carlton's looking at his brother, his brother's looking up a loser. Denny and Diablo stole a victory from their friends, like the sportsmen they are. And Dykes, he can see Dykes right now, is absolutely fed up. Absolutely fed up with his brother's head not being the game. But a good night for Diablo and Denny, number one contenders, looking at a tag team title shot in their future. May 22nd, Rand Community Center. Mountain State Wrestling and all of its super, well, the only three superstars it has, the gift of Raj rolls the town. Understand there's a little fair that night. Don't blow all your money on the little rides and the games. Come on down and see the greatness, King Richard. If you want to see fair, folks, come on down and watch the gift of Raj wrestle. We're fair to the heart. Saturday, June 12th, hitting West Virginia. The one man wrecking crew, Bulldozer, is coming to wreak havoc on the Summer County's Memorial Building. June 19th, Alderson, West Virginia. Alderson Rec Center, NWA Mountain State, coming to town. Bunkhouse boys looking for those tag team titles. 
June 19th, Alderson, West Virginia. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for enjoying our broadcast tonight. Join us again next week for more hard-hitting hillbilly action from Mountain State Wrestling. This is Professor Wrestler Jimmy Vang, the Boogie Woogie Man. Tell all my people, all my brothers and sisters, don't you dare miss this one. NWA Mountain State Wrestling on Fox WV. Oh, yeah.